Oh my God, Michael, they turned Michael Myers into a window licker. Oh shit, I didn't even think about that. Welcome to Make a Path Presents, I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today let's talk about the brand new movie, Halloween Kills, which follows the storyline from Halloween 1978, Halloween 2018, and then Halloween Kills 2021. I can't stand how it goes, Halloween, Halloween, Halloween Kills. I don't know. Something about that bothers me. You couldn't just call it another Halloween or something. <laughs> Anyhow, um, for those who don't know me, I'm a mega big fan. I actually have a new series called Flaw vs. All Reviews where we go in deep about the stuff we love and hate within movies we love and hate. We have Friday the 13th Part 1 to 5 on the channel now. Check it out. You'll love it. Uh, you won't regret it. And we also have Halloween... Uh, 1978 coming, followed behind 2018, and then hopefully in January-ish, when they release Halloween Kills on Blu-ray, we'll be able to do a Flaw vs. All review of that, and that dives deep on every scene, uh, the good and the bad. Now, going back to Halloween Kills, a spoiler-free introduction... I don't regret going to the theater to see this, but my God, it was a combination. And I even held off. I was a bit busy working yesterday, but I even held off on doing the review because this was like a one-two punch of Myers is awesome visually. I mean, he's just a beast in this movie. He is, he's a, he, it's like he gets possessed with, um, the, uh, I don't know, the attitude of Jason Voorhees with the goriness at times, the brutality, uh, my, my, per my perfect mix, you know, a creepy stalker, but then gory and tough, but visually he looks great. The gores are there, a ton of kills. All that is awesome. All that is absolutely awesome. Even parts of the storyline is cool as shit. However, a lot of the rest, the side characters, the plot, the story, the social commentary. It is so cringy. It's an unbelievable back and forth of, ooh, I can't, whoa, slow down, slow your roll, you know? There's literally so many chants of evil dies tonight in the most cringe-tastic way that does not stop. It's like a good chunk of time on screen where people just... I don't, it was a failed attempt. Anyhow, spoiler free though, it's a mix. You're going to get some really good with some really bad. And I guarantee, and I'll put, I, I will bet you any money in rewatching this movie because the fire scenes are so fire, not the fire scenes, but like the good scenes are so good. I guarantee it, it clouds a lot of judgment and people will rewatch this movie and they won't love it as much. Reality will set in and they'll come down a notch and they'll realize it's probably the best version of Myers on screen, the more entertaining, brutal, you know, action-packed, uh, visually, even the flashbacks, whoo -hoo, they did good. But as in totality, oof, a big oof. That's all I got to say. Now, spoiler free to finish it out. I don't regret seeing it in theaters. I had a really good time watching it in theaters, even though I left mixed. I will highly recommend watching it in theaters for those who love that theater experience. And then uh, if not, I still recommend watching it sooner rather than later. Check it out. Let me know your thoughts. But let's dive into the actual spoilers. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a raw review. So if you hear the paper, I got a little bit of notes scribbled down here. Uh, the intro, one thing I want to point out I love because in 1978 Halloween, what happened is they don't freeze the screen, but they have the live action characters. When the parents of uh, Michael Myers pulls off his mask, they just kind of stand there and they move around a little, but you can see it, it was like a moment frozen in time. It had that purposeful uh, visual artistic vibe. They do that again in the beginning of this with... Uh, the cops aiming the guns at a, a, a flashback of Myers from that night in 78. Now, um, we do have close-ups of the gutter. Remember when the gutter fell and it scared uh, Loomis in the original? So there's that consistency nugget, I call it. You could call it an Easter egg, a callback. I call those moments a consistency nugget. Those were good. Even when it was in your face and up close, they were good. Some of it, 
was not as good, like reintroducing the survivors. Some of it was mixed, like it was harmless and cool introducing them. I love the fact that they were at the bar. Uh, I do like the, um, um, the story time at the bar, which I really wish they changed the dialogue there. It just felt awkward. Something was off about it, and it was off in such a way I couldn't fathom because it was discombobulated as if the, the town should not remember what's going on, but then some do, but then it's a it's a Haddonfield boogeyman. I really wish a simple fix would have been like, listen guys, when Tommy got on stage, he was like, you know, a year after we did a memorial and ever since then it's been 40 years now. We haven't really talked about it. There's a lot of runaway stories about the Haddonfield boogeyman, but you're going to hear the truth of what happened that night. Uh, you're going to hear that right now. And then Tommy's going to tell the story. And then he says, I was that boy. Something like that for me as a fan would have been like an emotional punch. The, in the movie, it was just like, I, I, it didn't work. Anyway, now, uh, but I love the Haddonfield boogeyman stuff. Uh, but um, uh, the social commentary, right? It connects to that bar scene because that's where they get the first idea that the transport bus got um, sidetracked and there was two escapees and that blends into the social commentary with the other escapee that was so very stupid because they don't know what he looks like. You mean to tell me they don't know what Michael Myers looks like? He was photographed when in 78 when he was arrested. He was photographed. He had a mug shot. Not only that, but when he went for his preliminary hearing, they probably put it most likely in Haddonfield, blew the newspaper up. We had a serial killer in my hometown, Hugo Solinsky, and they blew up the newspaper with uh, his images every time he had... A, you know, a fart in prison, they blew his image up. So now keep in mind in 78, maybe the records might not be as good, but then he would get updated pictures for the facility ID from the facility he was in. And that that's skipping the fact that once he was found guilty of the murders of the babysitters, they would every time he goes back to court, which would be numerous times, uh, found guilty, whether they were testing him for his mental well-being, all of those instances would be uh, put in the paper numerous times. There's no way Lori doesn't look into what he looks like. There's no way Tommy doesn't know what he looks like. All of that was incompetent bullshit. The writers either were just straight incompetent or they assume the audience is just too stupid to pick up on it. And I bet you it was the latter because that is so obvious when you're really putting a story down. There's no way you miss that. And like I said, they show Myers' mugshot on the screen, but they blur it out. Come on. Anyway, um, so we get some callbacks with uh, the nurse in the back of the car. This is overdone overkill. Like in in uh, Halloween 78 and Halloween 2018 where it was uh, it was Jay uh, Myers' face, you know, coming from the darkness and behind Lori Strobe and then Strode and then he cut her arm, just missed her. And then in 2018, it was uh, Lori coming from the darkness and then she cut Michael's arm. It's like, come on, it's a bit much. I, I loved where he looked down at Lori in 2018 and she was missing instead of him from 78. But recopying what was already done is not interesting. And I know why they do it. Like I said, um, I've been very interested in doing screenplay stuff. I've talked to a lot of people in Hollywood that does screenplay stuff. And I'm talking like, you know, out at the bar and nightclub and kind of kicking some stories. And uh, one of the things they purposefully do is if you're a fan of something and, and it's worked in other properties, uh, they'll copy it. I bring this up all the time. Star Wars copied from uh, the Marvel movies, the... the uh, um, Thanos storyline, you know, I am Iron Man, I am the Jedi, straight copied because it worked for Marvel. So in a in an act of desperation, they tried it on Star Wars because if you loved it for one, you gotta love it for the other. But it doesn't work all the time. They do that as well when they rip off their own properties. Well, you loved it when Michael jumped on the back of the car in the original, and then he he hit the glass and scared the nurse, right? Well, they just copy that. And they might have been thinking like, oh, that's cool. Let's do it again. It is an Easter egg. But everything's an Easter egg. You're overdosing this. A little bit of heroin will get you high, but too much will kill you. You know, you're killing us here. Anyway, 
Um, the, so they, they do that with the nurse. The dead dog was freaking awesome though, because they talked about it off screen in the original, but now we see it and it's like, oh, hell yeah. And then we have, um, uh, Lori falling in the original, but now her granddaughter, uh, falls. Is there? Yeah. It's her granddaughter falls. Uh, and then, um, bracket with the, everyone deserves one final, one good scare on Halloween. You're overdosing us on the callback and the, the member berries. Calm the fuck down. Anyway, uh, all the Myers versus the firefighter killing was freaking awesome. The biracial couple killing was brutal, kind of sad and still awesome. The boot prints were the young cop in the flashback. He looked down. That was cool as shit, but then it's as if he, he, I don't know, forgot there, you know, there was fresh bloody footprints and he started saying something and Michael attacked him, but still that shit was awesome. I hated the, uh, young cop of, um, the one that got stabbed. I'm going a million miles an hour. Uh, I'm not going to remember names just yet, but, uh, the one that got stabbed in the 78 who should be dead, but is now alive. Uh, I don't like that. He shot his, his, um, his partner. I think it was poorly done. I get what they were trying to do, but I, I don't dig it. I love that Loomis went to shoot Michael, though. Ah, that was Loomis. When Loomis was like, my God, I was like, nah, Loomis would try to kill this son of a bitch. And he did. And then the boyfriend getting killed. Yes, that was brutal. The car getting stabbed in the eye. The uh, the nurse goes out the window, though. The uh, the the black nurse who was a doctor in in life but dressed up as a nurse she falls out the car window and then disappears michael kills her husband kills the nurse the real you know the old nurse and then she shows up like 20 feet away from the car busting at michael missing all all her shots and then that he kicks the door open and she shoots herself in the head the theater got a chuckle out of it but still it's like and it's a different type of kill and michael finally killed someone with a gun technically uh but it you were 20 feet away. Did you run away? Was there a scene missing? Did she run away, change her mind and be like, oh, I got a gun, you know? And they were shooting at Michael's on the top of the roof of the car and they're shooting out the window. Just shoot at the top of the roof of the car. He can only be in so many, uh, so much of that space above you. Anyhow, so uh, the theater roared where the, um, the, the daughter came in the mom. And I think the music for me didn't work, but I liked what they were going for. Mama bear saved the day. It also leads into how the fuck did she know they were there? And here's another thing. No one calls and organizes with the cops. No one has cell phones. No one organizes with each other with using modern day technology. It's supposed to be 2018 in that world. Okay, the one girl, her cell phone is broke, fine. But Tommy, uh, Lonnie, none of them have cell phones. And here's why it's stupid. It would have made the plot better if the daughter or Lonnie or the boyfriend, she would have used one of their cell phones saying, Mom, Michael's at his old house, yada, 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 whoop de whoop That makes sense. Then the mother shows up, but they didn't want to blow their load with the mother's surprise. They wanted you to actually believe the granddaughter was going to die. Give me a break. But she comes in and she stabs him with the the uh, the pick, the fork thingy, the farmer fork from the the gay couple's porch. Uh, yeah, that was, that was Michael's house. Anyway, I, I like the fact that someone's living in Michael's house. But she comes in and she beats his ass and then she stops and takes his mask. The theater literally roared and was like, "Kill her! We want her dead." Uh, one dude was like that bitch, like the theater was mad and that's the writers doing stuff that makes the, um, you know, the, the people just, I don't know, seem shitty, <laughs> you know, the characters anyway. So, uh, she takes his mask and runs off. And this is something I'm a little surprised. I predicted they would show his face and he would haul ass off the porch, not like run, but you know, a quick briskly walk off the porch to get his mask. Like you are in trouble type of walk. And they, they did it in a way that was really underwhelming and I'm disappointed. I got my hopes up. I was convinced that scene was going to happen. We'd see a little bit of his face, but it's covered in soot. He's covered in blood. He's got a, you know, he's got shot in the face on the one side uh he's you know what i'm saying so it is dirty mucky and so it's not a clean look at his face but still it's something and, and it gives the audience a, we've already seen his face pause it in 2018 they show his face the behind the scenes is enough to get you an idea of what you know he would look like and it, it looks cool 
run with it. And they show enough of his face. He walks around without a mask on and it kind of looks silly because, you know, we get grandma fighting Myers in 2018 and now we got, well, grandma that looks like a reboot version of uh, 2021 Back to the Future Doc Brown. I don't know who said, yeah, let's let's try to make Lori look like old Lori and give her this hair. What were you thinking? What were you... She looks like a reboot of a uh, modern-day gender-swapped Doc Brown. You guys are nuts. She looks fucking ridiculous. Anyway, uh, but I love Jamie Lee Curtis, but whoever decided on that hairstyle should be fired. Now, um... What else did I have down? The uh, yeah, the theater roared. That's all good. And when Michael comes up, uh, I did the no one calls with the cell phones. Uh, should have had t- Tommy and Karen uh, with the trap. Yeah, the trap was ridiculous. There is no way they would have known Michael was there to set the trap. So very, so very movie like stupidity where things just worked out perfectly and there's no reason for it to they didn't know where michael was they randomly left the hospital but they organized a perfect trap where she's gonna know she's gonna steal his mask and lead him into the trap even if she felt she'd lead him into the 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 trap without a mask but that's where we get to a moment i loved michael shows up bends down to pick up or no he shows up the lights go on, the town versus Michael, holy shit, I was hyped, I was like, let's get it, and I will go back real quick, it was risky, and I did love the realistic injury to Lori, now that is realism, she got stabbed, they showed her surgery, I want to give them props, they showed it, and that is legit, I had a, a appendix burst and it uh, it almost killed me. I was like 45 minutes away from death's door and I had to do physical therapy to walk again. And it was like two weeks of hell. Very minor compared to being stabbed in the gut. I think Lori's wound was like 10 times worse than mine. And I couldn't walk for days. I couldn't walk, you know, for days after that. And uh, so, yes, she would be like, and the way she jammed the needle in, give me a break. What are you doing? No one, no person in the right mind would do that. You're going to snap the needle. You don't need to do that. Any, It's just all movie shit. But anyway, Michael's there versus the town. Oh my God, I am hyped. He goes to pick up his mask. He's like, bring it. And then the, the filmmakers, they shot themselves in the foot. How? As soon as Michael goes to fight the town, they instantly start beating Michael up. And as soon as that moment happened, my brain went, zoop, he's supernatural and he's not going to um, die. Because look, you build up to this amazing moment. You build up to this final showdown with the town. And instead of having somebody take a, a swing at Michael and he gets a, uh, you know, gets a stab in here and gets somebody there and then they overpower him and make it an epic showdown, they immediately just beat Michael down. It was like showing your cards too early, too soon. Uh, oh, look, you know, oh, Michael's done. Huh? Like, what? Do you, OK, you're going to fool a five year old. You know what I'm saying? Any grown adult is knows this isn't how you're going to put Michael out. Plus, there's another movie coming, which I wasn't even thinking about. Just the simple fact that he got beat right away. I knew. Oh, shit. Oh, here it comes. He's going to be supernatural. And um, that's where they overplayed their hand. Uh, But sure, they beat him down. They kill him. And this is where the movie goes off the rails in a ridiculous way that I, I just don't understand. The ending is the biggest jumbled mess rush of an edit I've ever seen in a movie that had a lot of calculated filming, you know, nice. It was as if they ran out of time and they were like, oh man, I don't know when they were filming, but it's like, imagine if COVID was kicking off where, uh, when they were ending their filming and they go, shit, instead of having a month to film this finale, we have three days. So it's so choppy where the daughter is talking to uh, her daughter and uh, holding her, comforting her. And then, um, 
there's a voiceover with Lori talking about how the more he kills, the more he yada, yada, yada. And then Michael just in these weird artistically visual shots of Michael just killing everybody. And then Tommy Doyle, which was part you wanted to root for him, but they wrote him so annoying half the time. They, they have the dumbest way of him just going, ah, towards the camera. The, it, it's everybody against a black screen in this slow-mo, really up close. And you just see, like, a guy's face getting his throat slit and he looks ridiculous. You, Tommy Doyle just getting stabbed in the chest with, I don't know. It's just, it was so shit. And then the biggest shit on the sandwich, Karen, Karen just gets up goes up an active crime scene. And I think the movie wanted us to believe that the paramedics were there and they would just believe that the other people were dead and they wouldn't go in the house. Paramedics are going to go in the house. Not only that, when you have a killer, maybe they said the killer was dead. Okay, fine. Now it's clear. The cops are there to clear the way for the paramedics. This is 2018. This isn't, you know, 1960, 1970. So you can't cheat it and say it was just old in a shitty old town. 2018, cops would have been there. They would have cleared the house. They would have locked it down as a crime scene. Fuck out of here. This is suspend your disbelief beyond what's reasonable for a movie of this scope. No. And it was so dumb. Karen goes up. You shouldn't have had the, the paramedics arrive at this time yet, if that's what you wanted to do. Maybe they were just arriving as she uh, gets up and goes into the house. It's a crime scene again. It's supposed to be shut down. She goes up, looks out the window, and then Michael's there, and we get another visually a visual diarrhea of a scene of Karen getting stabbed in one of the most underwhelming ways. And I have a feeling maybe it was done so they can probably bring her back. Maybe that didn't happen. Maybe she lived. Maybe she didn't get stabbed all the way to death. But my God, was it underwhelming. Again, visually, just how they did it. I do want to just toss in the social commentary bit real quick because I think that was equally a mess and I don't understand the purpose of that. Part of me feels like in Hollywood, you're not allowed to do some things uh, without doing a double version of it that's different. Like, for example, uh, Michael Myers escaped from a uh, mental institution, a facility, right? Well, I can already see some people going... Oh, that makes people who have mental health issues look like murderous killers. It's just Michael es escaped. You know, Jason Voorhees kills people at a camp. It doesn't mean all camps have wicked killers in the woods. Give me a break. You don't have to show an equal camp that's doing like well. Not only that, it, it, it's a social commentary on mob mentality and how they don't always get it right because they're too loud, too aggressive, too forceful. They don't stop to think and listen and rationalize. However, it was so dumb because you got a Danny DeVito look like you didn't even attempt to get someone that was maybe tall and kind of yada, yada, yada. Again, not having Tommy recognized that's not him right away. It should have been better if Tommy recognized it, the others recognized it, and there was a good amount of people that started to recognize it, but the crowd just overwhelmed them. That's where it's, it's done with some complexity and depth. Instead, it was done here in a very elementary way. Ooh, mob bad, you know, and then the guy jumps out and kills himself, which again, I, I thought it would have been better if he was going out the ledge to escape the mob and try to get to another window. As a fan, I thought it would have worked better because then it was like, oh my God, the poor guy was just trying to get away. He was scared. He was terrified. He wanted to live, but then he died. But having him just jump out the window like, oh, I'm going to die is kind of like, oh, all right, well, guy had problems, you know? And it's a small thing, but I just want to highlight at the end of the 78 in the flashback, they knock him down and it's fine. I guess they knock him out. You can knock Michael out, but you, you can't kill him. <laughs> it's just kind of weird how it was, it was retconned in this very movie. And then in the same movie, you knock him down and he just gets up and brutally kills everyone. One small retcon that kind of bummed me out was I always saw 78 Myers when he kills his uh, sister in the very beginning of the movie. I saw that as he was a, a normal kid, but he was a little bit 
troubled. And once he killed his sister, boom, he was just taken over. It was like he absorbed the violence and the death in that moment. And he just couldn't speak. It was a sense of, you know, euphoria and just uh, a new, you know, Michael, uh, the non-speaking Michael breaking off from the child, you know, yada, yada, yada. But in this one, they, they went, they went the simple route. I'll be honest, the easy route. And they just had a cop say, yeah, I grew up with Michael. I went over to play with him. He just kept staring out his window. He didn't talk much. And it was like, man, I don't know. I like that idea a little better, but now it doesn't fit as much when I watch it with this movie, you know, in consideration because now the canon is, you know, Michael was always quiet even as a kid when, again, having the killing be what kind of shut him down completely, like locked his humanity out in a sense. To me, that was beautiful in the the movie and it was it fit Michael perfectly. And again, that's why he doesn't talk. It was the killing of his sister, locked out the, the final portion of his humanity and it was on. But they retconned that here in a way and uh, it is what it is. But like I said, uh, there's not much I can say in closing. This is more like a podcast type of uh Open discussion, I tried to talk as fast as I can, so it wasn't too long, but here's my thoughts and opinions. We will be doing Halloween um, 1978, and then Halloween 2018, and then going back to Friday, as far as the Flawless All reviews, and then once we get caught up, we are going to be doing Scream uh, around the time of uh, the new Scream movie, and we are going to be doing newer movies as well. And we are going to be coming back to finish the Halloween franchise and also Nightmare on Elm Street. And I'm only mentioning the classics, but we will have some new movies that will be done as surprises every now and then. So thoughts and opinions for Halloween Kills. Let me know if I'm wrong, if you think this is the greatest and it will always be the greatest in your eyes. Or do you think there might be something to, yeah, rewatching evil dies tonight it has to be me i have to kill him okay grandma take some fucking medicine okay someone tell this bitch it's not about her already because this shit is getting embarrassing when you know it's michael doesn't even you're not special michael doesn't even know who you are you know what i'm saying he doesn't know who you are where you live he probably hasn't even thought about you given i still stand by michael stalked her purposefully. I know everyone has these weird theories about the first one. No, that's how the story unfolds. That's canon. That's fact. She dropped the, the thing off. Michael saw her. He stalked her and Tommy. Then that led to her, Annie, Tommy, Lindsay, and then Michael just started killing babysitters, you know? So it started with Lori, but that was just as something that caught his eye. It's different now. You know, Michael just wants to kill. And stare out windows. Oh my god, Michael. They turned Michael Myers into a window licker. Oh shit. I didn't even think about that. Lord have mercy. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. I didn't even think about that. Oh, Michael, what did they do to you, man? I gotta go. I can't take it.